everyone, Saucy here, and today I'm playing... Well, so that's right here. Still water. Um... I felt like I did read something about it, but that was yesterday when I was looking for something to play. I think it's another visual novel that I went to go... that I found and was interested. But let's start. A work of fiction, the resemblance to any real life people is purely coincidental. This game depiction of horror, mature themed violence, and strong language. Viewers' discretion is advised. There's your warning. So, I'm sorry, but I can't stay here anymore, Nina. I feel like I'm going crazy. Calm down. If we just talk it out. So many strange things keep happening after another. Every day there is this damn dripping sound. I thought it was just something leaking at first, but I check every faucet, every ceiling, every pipeline, and still, I still hear it everywhere, constantly echoing in my ears. Oh, but the water. I found random pools of water just appearing out of nowhere, just like dripping. But it's at night. It's at night when it comes. So is the house haunted? Is this where we're going? I don't know. I don't know if it's my paranoia, but I swear I could hear footsteps walking along the hallways, walking on pools of water. They walk and they walk upstairs, then downstairs. And upstairs and downstairs and upstairs and downstairs. Okay, okay. Pacing upstairs and downstairs. We got it. And it goes on and on and on and on like that. But somehow, it does come to an end. And it ends all in front of your grandfather's room. I am getting some haunted house vibes. Is that what we're doing here? I know that this is a lot, but you have to believe me. No matter how many times I clean, it just won't end. I can't stay here any longer. I'm sorry, Nina. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for taking care of my grandfather. Nina, please listen to me. I don't know what's happening around here, but... The woman on the phone cautiously looks around before speaking again in a hushed tone. Is that something? Oh yeah! Right here! Cause there's a dude sitting down here but there's like a shadowy figure right here. Maybe it is a ghost. Something terrible is lurking through this house. I don't know what it is but please as soon as you get back, take your grandfather and just leave this place. I can't just leave. That's my home. Please, Nina, this place, it's not safe. I don't know what you saw, but I can't just leave things like this. Mm, just that creepy, creepy, creepy shadow. It's my home. It's my home. I don't know, if I was her, I'd just- <laughs> I'd do what she says. Someone was seeing strange things in my house. I thought I said dinner and I was like, who has dinner at 7 a.m.? Amid a foggy morning, there sits a man by a corner of, the boot, of a booth. He drinks black coffee and, depending on his mood, occasionally orders a donut. But today, it was just black coffee. Ugh. I swear I've never seen that amount of paperwork in my life. A freaking mountain worth of it. You're a valuable member of, the, of our team, Hugo. It's so weird to say that name because that's like my dad's name. <laughs> my foot. I'm starting to believe that I was bamboozled into joining their agency. 
Ah. Hugo Lauren, age 30, take, takes a good look at his cup of joe and chugs it all in one sitting. All right. That work life. <laughs> he then continues to grumble to himself about last night's grueling work at the office. I really need a different job. As he contemplates his poor life choices, he looks out towards the early mist. There was something inherently terrifying about the fog to him. How it engulfed everything and nothing. Even if it disappears, it always leaves behind traces. Leaves behind trace. Oh. My brain did not process that. Proof of it remaining. Even in a quaint little town like this, I can't even run from my fate, I guess. Hugo finally stares at the compiled newspaper clippings he put together. Some of them from recent events, but mainly all were past headlines of a missing person case. No matter how many times I see this, it's still just as hard as it looks. Oh, still hard as it to look at. Oh my god, I don't know where my brain was at. Fixing case after case, he can't help but remind himself that there is a reason for all this. An all too personal reason. Seeing strange things come with the price. In the end, I'm the one doing this to myself. Sounds rough. Mind if I join? An annoyingly familiar face interrupts his train of thought. He slowly looks up to see one of... Looks up to see the one responsible, although reluctantly. Good morning, Hugo. Hugo scrawls and turns away from him. He then gathers the files and shoves it back into his binder. Meanwhile, the tall man takes this as an, as an initiative and sits at the opposite end of the booth. He greets the waitress passing by and orders himself the hefty body special breakfast with an extra plate. Oh, damn! <laughs> As usual, the waitress is happy to oblige and goes back to the, corner, to the counter to relay his order. The man then looks back at Hugo. He sees the empty cup and the now jumbled newspaper clippings. All the while, Hugo is trying to ignore him. You really should eat something with that black coffee. Not ordering any donuts today? I'm fine, Noah. I'm just not in the mood, okay? Not even a little? <laughs> there is a momentary silence between them before Noah disturbs it once more. Well, too bad for you. I ordered a big breakfast for the two of us. Oh my god. Two? As if the world would grace Noah with an even more perfect punchline, the food arrives. Why the hell did you order for the two of us? Just eat what you want. Don't worry about me. Wow. This looks so delicious, right, Hugo? Are you even listening to me? Oh, come on. We both know that if you don't eat now, who knows when you will. And I'm not about to let you faint again. So, open wide. <laughs> Noah de Leon, age 27, a natural born charmer. He, he looks like he's... he is. <laughs> is just as equally persuasive as he is threatening. With a pensive look, Hugo finally gives in and eats the generous spoonful without further complaints. It's good. Right? Good food will always help cheer you up. Damn him. I got swept away again. Oh, by the way, the chief will be out for a business trip. She mentioned it will be for a couple of days. When did she tell you this? I didn't hear anything about it. Mm, yesterday, I think. Yesterday? She told me to sort out the cabinets yesterday. She didn't mention anything about a business trip. 
I guess it was a pretty sudden one. Well, I mean, she did tell me to tell you. And lucky me, I know where you go every morning. <laughs> you know what? I'm not surprised anymore. Well, what do you want to do? We technically have the day off. I'm gonna head back to the office. There's a couple of boxes that I didn't get a chance to sort out. In that case, I'll come with you. Why? You could just have... You could just rest for the day. And pass up this opportunity to get to know you better? Quit it. Well then. <laughs> After the enlightening banter, the two of them finish their breakfast, pay for their meals, and head to Hugo's car. Oh, I see he's tagging along anyways, although he didn't want him to. As Noah opens the door to the passenger seat, he notices a bloodhound sleeping inside. Oh, big doggy. The big dog stirs at the sound of the car opening and lazily stares at Noah. Ah, I'm sorry, big guy. He then closes the door while trying not to make too much noise to disturb its occupant. Colby. At the sound of his name, his heavy lidded eyes slowly peek to see who calls for him. So cute. <laughs> it was his one and only partner, his human. As if finally realizing who he is or where he is, the old bloodhound stirs up from his sleep, pounces at Hugo and proceeds to wag his tail uncontrollably. So cute. Good morning again, Colby. Had a nice nap? Colby, eight years old, Hugo's most faithful and loving partner in crime. He has the biggest tendency to just sleep all over the place. How cute. Noah, who is witnessing all of this from the back seat, chuckles to himself. He is amazed and slightly defeated at Hugo's sudden surge of energy. Nah, it doesn't matter how many times I try, when it comes to boosting up his mood, no one can beat Colby. Well, yeah, a pet's a pet. <laughs> the three headed back to the office. I was like, three? I forgot about the dog. <laughs> Instantly. Uh, the space, just the same as Hugo left it. A decent, organized mess. To his credit, for the amount of boxes he painstakingly went through, he believes he did a fair job. Albert could have been better. Wow, you really outdid yourself, Hugo. It looks less crowded. <laughs> ah, shut it, will you? I said I was gonna get it, get to it. Thanks, boy. Before Hugo could continue to give Deserved head pats, he notices someone. A woman stands timidly, peering outside from the storefront. The woman appears a bit frantic. Deceived and wearing ill-fitted clothes, she appears to be distressed about something. When she finally makes eye contact with Hugo, she immediately rushes in. I... I'm so sorry. I know that the clothes sign is up, but... I saw you come in and I... Are you alright, miss? I need your help. My grandfather, he... Before she can continue, Noah swiftly intervenes. It's okay. We'll hear you. We'll hear what you have to say. So please, why don't you take a seat? Noah gestures to one of the empty chairs. The poor woman hesitates for a moment before heavily sighing in relief. She's probably the, um, the lady, but well, obviously they said grandfather from the beginning on the phone, not the caretaker, but the, the person on the other side of the phone. <laughs> uh, she then walks towards the corner of the room and sits on the sofa. Can you start off by telling us your name? I'm sorry for earlier. My name is Nina Mortimer. I need help 
watching over my grandfather tonight. Watching over your grandfather? Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Mortimer, but I don't quite understand. Is he in danger? I'm afraid he is. Miss Mortimer, if that is the case, wouldn't contacting the police be better? No! I've tried requesting their help, but they all gave me the same answer. There is nothing they can do about it. If only I knew who Lewis was. Lewis? Nina fidgets at the name. She looks to the side before reaching out from her bag for an antique letter. My grandfather, he received a cryptic message the other day. It didn't come with an address or the name of the sender. However, the only thing I did pick up was the name. She hands over the letter. She hand, as she hands over the letter, Hugo notices her hand slightly shaking. Whatever lies in this note must have shaken her this badly. Delicately, Hugo removes the content of the envelope and unfolds it. So it's not ghost related? At first glance, it seems like any normal written message. A person named Lewis asking the other, Henry, to come meet him by the lake at midnight. Needing to share something important with him. However, what's eerily striking about this letter is not the message itself. Rather, at the bottom of the page, a sentence far more disturbing is written. I am coming for you, Henry. Oh my. He... Someone's coming for him. So it's not a ghost. Um. So if it's not a ghost, what was all the, the thing the caretaker was listening to? Like with the, the droppy sounds. Were they sneaking into the house? Hmm. Were there any letters like this? Oh, and were there any other letters like this? Yes, a few of them. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but this one. This one was different. Up until now, I've never heard of anyone by that name. Not a relative or family friend. But they clearly know who my grandfather is. If I don't do something about this, I'll lose... I'll lose him too. Just by uttering the words alone, Nina breaks down. Hiding away her tears... Her... Hiding away her tear-streaked face, she begins to quietly sob to herself. As an act of comfort, Colby sits closely to Nina while Noah fetches tissues for her. Hugo, on the other hand, is puzzled. This very well could have been a prank, but she seems certain. Certain that whoever or whatever this Lewis person is, they're coming. Do you want more tissues? I'll do it. Now take on your case. For a moment, silence fills the room. Only stares are directed at Hugo until Nina finally stands up and walks towards him. You'll take it? Hugo simply nods. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know how much this means to me. We're glad to help, Miss Nina. Nina is fine. Well, Nina, we'll do our best. Nina slightly smiles at Hugo before reaching into her bag once more and taking out a note. This is my address. I'll be sure to greet you once you get there, detective. She politely bows once more before heading to her car and drives back home. Once out of sight, Hugo turns to look at the cl his cluttered desk. Still messy, but presentable. I guess I'll have to sort these out later again. Well. Oh. 
From the ongoing from the ongoing downpour to the quiet hums of the car, they still they sit in silence. Still miles off from their destination, Hugo constantly checks the rearview mirror. Noah, who usually chats his ear off by now, sits completely still. He looks out to the passing streetlights, reserved and distant. Hey, you're a lot quieter than usual. What's wrong? Ha, this is a surprise. Have you been looking at me, Hugo? No, you idiot. You usually just talk a lot, that's all. So, you do miss me talking a lot. Just say it. <laughs> I don't want to offend... No, oh, I didn't want to offend Nina earlier, so I kept quiet until she finished. But her last name... But it's her last name that caught me off guard. Have you heard about the Mortimers? They're pretty... They're a pretty distinguished family. Well, they used to be. What do you mean? They've been struck with so many tragedies that over time, people began to believe they were cursed or something. Uh, so maybe it still might be supernatural? Every other year, I would see headlines on the local news about one of their family members' death. That is probably why she's taking this matter very seriously. Because probably literally everyone in her family is like getting closer. Um, and you know what's strange? All of them have been labeled as accidents. Mm. So it's either it is ghosts or someone's doing some sketchy cover up stuff. No foul play, no nothing. Just another unfortunate event for the family. Maybe I understand why she wouldn't go to the police. She probably thought they'd perceive her as paranoid or hysterical. Or worse, crazy. I can't imagine all of this for Nina. And most of all, who knows what we'll find there. Is that why you decided to come with me? Well, partially. I'm more worried about you, though. Think of it this way. I'm an appointed driver. When you decide to do some pretty reckless shit, I'll be there to drive you to the local hospital. Oh, great. <laughs> Ugh. Besides, two are better than one. He's not wrong. Ex <laughs> exactly. I was fine with Colby coming with me. <laughs> well, have you heard that three is better than two? Ugh. Okay, so now we're at their place. Passing through countless dirt roads and steep cliffs, the estate reveals itself beyond the evergreen. Nestled and tucked away from prying eyes, it stands tall, looming from a distance. Hugo and Noah could only gaze at the sheer scale of the manor as they park adjacent from Nina's car. Wow. And to think she came all this way just to request us. It took us more than a couple of hours to get here. Maybe she really didn't have a choice. What do you mean? Come on, she's waiting for us. Immediately after exiting the driver's seat, a sharp pain weighs heavy on Hugo's chest. Grasping tightly at his coat, he begins to gasp for air. His gaze hazes and he leans close to the car. Like a fish drawn from the sea, he desperately heaves. But this ache he harbors pales in comparison to a pain far more excruciating. Is it the house? 
No. Something far more sinister. He feels it. Someone is watching him. A piercing gaze fixed on him. Like leering at a bug and waiting to strike. Is there anything we can see in the background? No? I was hoping like if it was like the, um, the beginning where you saw like that shadow with the grandfather or with the guy. I was like maybe we can see something but I don't think we do. We just see a st I just see a statue that looks like a person sitting down, but that's just it. Um, let's continue. I'll never forgive you. What the hell? Damn it, already? I need to hurry, or else... Hey, are you alright? Noah calls out to him, stepping him out of his fixated state, trance. Colby nudges his head against Hugo, whining with concern over his partner's well-being. Did... Did you hear that just now? Uh-oh. Is he already hearing things? He just got here! Hear what? That voice! It was so close to my ear, I... Is... Everything alright? Oh, I'm fine. Don't mind me. I'm just a bit winded out from the trip, that's all. I'd be happy to make you a coffee at the very least. If it's no trouble. No, not at all. It's the least I can do. Once again, the subtle uneasiness from Nina surfaces. But before Hugo could get a chance to look further into it, she walked off towards the front porch without saying another word. Are you sure you're alright? You sound like you were choking earlier. I said I'm fine. Besides, we're already here. We can't back out now. Listen to me. I think you should... Noah abruptly cuts his lecture short as he notices Nina stopping by the front door. She stands there silently, as if contemplating something. I know this may sound rude, but I didn't get a chance to know your names. Well, you were pretty out of it when you walked in. I'm really sorry about that. No worries. This is Detective Hugo Laurent. His assistant Colby. And his second assistant, Noah de Leon. I love that he's second assistant. Ha! <laughs> huh. It seems so surreal. Just like a cartoon. Ha <laughs> ha. Nina meekly smiles before turning away from them. I haven't been quite honest with you, Detective Laurent. Just like before. As if carefully choosing her next words, she decides that, in this situation, words are not enough. You'll see for yourself what I mean. And with that, Nina enters the house, leaving the three to follow behind. Hugo is about to enter through the foyer, when he feels a tug on his arm. Don't forget what I told you. If something happens, let me know right away. You'll be the first to know. And with that, Noah releases his grip on Hugo. They proceed to head in, not knowing what awaits them beyond the door. Greeted with a brightly lit hallway, Hugo, notices Hugo notes the interior is just as grand. Adorned with floral accents and antique paintings, it extrudes an elegant charm only found in resplendent house such as this. However, Hugo notices something even more distinct than splendor. Than the splendor. Ugh. The house is much more terrifying inside than out. Please come this way. Bracing themselves, they enter a dimly lit drawing room. At first glance, Hugo could not discern the silhouette situated at the far corner. However, on closer inspection, he now understands the reason 
for all of Nina's unsettling vagueness. Grandfather, we have guests. Sitting on the armchair is a young man. He is dressed in a white collared dress shirt, tucked in with black slacks and black penny loafers. That's your grandfather? He looks hella young. Starting, staring only at the window, the young man sits there, dazed with little acknowledgement of the people around him. Still, motionless, like a doll. Grandpa. That is not your grandpa. You cannot tell me that's your grandpa. He looks too young to be your grandpa. Uh, these are the people I spoke of. This is Detective Laurent and his two assistants, Colby and Noah. They're going to help us. Even after introducing them to the head of the Mortimer estate, Hugo and Noah could not help but feel unnerved. The man before them is supposed to be frail and older than any of them. And yet he remains forever unchanging, forever young. They've come a long way, so I'll be making some coffee. Would you also like some, Grandpa? Is he alive? <laughs> I mean... He's not moving, he's not talking. Uh, the young man still does not reply back. Never glancing at Nina or anyone else in the room. Only fixed on the rain. I'll be sure to make a cup for you too. She then timidly gestures to Hugo and Noah back to the foyer. Bearing more questions, the two follow Nina outside. But before they leave the drawing room, Hugo takes one last look at the young man. There is an all too familiar air about Henry Mortimer. His eyes. They're similar to his own. Whatever he must be longing for, Hugo knows it will not end well. Nina, that man. Yes, he's my grandfather. The one I asked you all to watch over. I know this is hard to believe, but... Nina draws something from her pocket. It's an antique picture of a young man with slicked back hair wearing a luxurious suit. He appears to be poised and refined. A complete contrast to the current Henry Mortimer. This isn't much to go by. But I swear, he is the same person. Then why does he look so... young? It happened a few nights ago. I was on my way to get a cup of tea when I heard a loud thud coming from my grandfather's room. I was worried that something fell over, so I went to go check. When I opened the door, I found him collapsed on the floor. I rushed to help him, but... When I did, he looked so different. Okay, so he was old. But one day he just looked young. Interesting. So many things were rushing to my head, and yet he felt so familiar to me. He wore the same clothes that my grandpa wore that night. And his face, I recognized his face. He just looked younger. What do you do in this situation? Like, I mean, I doubt something like this would actually happen in real life, but like, what do you do if, like, you, like, if it was? And someone's telling you that, like, this young dude's their grandpa and they just found them young again one day. <laughs> that seems very awkward or, like, weird to, like, wrap your head around. Um, that was also the same night I found that letter. It was next to him, already opened. I'm sorry again for all of this. 
no matter who I went to, they said, they either said something was wrong with me or my family. With everything going on, maybe they're right. The pools of water, the dripping sounds, the leather, and now this? Maybe my family is really cursed. They're not. Curses aren't real. Oh, maybe you'll <laughs> consider after we, whatever we, way we find out what has happened to her grandpa. Detective? I think we easily get too involved in believing that sort of thing exists. In reality, the one, the ones who fixate on it feeds off of it. Rumors, doubts, lies, all of those things are what they want to become real. Did you not just see that young dude that she was calling grandpa? How do you logically explain that? Unless it was like some like real good prank where they like did a whole swap and they found the dude that looks exactly like a grandpa? I don't think. <laughs> um, deep rooted emotions like that can't possibly be healed or fixed right away. But like a curse, those emotions drag other people down with them. Personally, I think you were caught up in all of this. But I assure you, we'll see this through. For you and your grandfather. Thank you. Good. Now our first priority is to find out more about Louis. Nina. The letter you showed us back at the agency. Do you have it with you? Ah yes, it's here. Do you mind if I borrow it for a bit? I'll be sure to give it back. Of course. I'll check upstairs. Noah, you and Colby check the ground floor. Got it. Before they leave to do their investigations, Hugo grabs a hold of Noah's shoulder. He leans in close enough for Nina not to hear. Keep a close eye on Mr. Mortimer and Nina. Especially Nina. Is he suspicious of her? Okay. I'm counting on you. You too, boy. With that, Hugo heads upstairs, starting his investigation. After searching vigorously through each of the rooms, he knew his findings would eventually lead him here. This is it. Hugo walks towards the nearest lampshade and opens it. Dimly illuminated, he sees the extent of how lavished this part of the house is. From customized drapes to the vintage furniture, everything here extrudes that extravagance. But much like the interior Hugo has seen so far, he finds this one in particular reeks of it. Plastered from wall to wall, a sense of gloom lingers. As if it... It's as if the room itself is moldering despite its preserved nature. I need to hurry. I don't want to stay here for too long. Okay, that was like, what, 20 minutes? I think, because he was in there like at 11.30, right? He searches and searches, still no sign of anything. Not one thing pertaining to Lewis. <laughs> Damn it, nothing? It's as if he cleared out everything, just blank everywhere. No, it has to be here. I'm just missing something. He ponders again before remembering the letter. This is the only proof Lewis exists so far. I'll try to read it again. Maybe I overlooked it. As he takes the letter out from the envelope, he knows a change within. Bearing no foreboding threat at the bottom of the page, it looks just like a regular letter. 
What the? If you can't come, then I understand. It's pretty dairy after all. Ah. But if I can ask one last favor of you, could you keep my locket? I know this is selfish of me, but I'd like for you to have it. I'd be happy knowing it's with you. Thank you for everything, Henry. Oh, that is a completely different note. That's like... This is like a note responding or like right after the note that they saw at their office. Forever yours, Lewis. This is the same Lewis? I thought he was the cause of all of this. I don't understand. Without warning, the sound of a click can be heard across the, the bedroom. As if something unlocked itself. Hugo turns around and sees at the foot of the bed a chest. Unlike the other furniture, its dark and rustic features have not been maintained well. Left to rot on its own. Preparing himself, he opens the chest. Inside, scrambled together a bunch of notebooks and small trinkets. Hugo continues to rummage through when he st stumbles upon an old newspaper article. Young man found dead by the lake. An unidentified young man was found on the morning of XX XX years. Three days prior to his death, according to, to the police. Ruled out as a suicide, police have claimed that the troubled youth drowned himself. This certainly is a tragic loss, an un unfortunate event indeed. XXX comments. No claim of his body has been made, at, made yet. Lewis? By the corner of his eye, he spots... A bright glint bur buried beneath the clutter. He reaches for it. A locket of brilliant gold shines unblemished, retaining its timeless luster. Inside, it safeguards a picture of a young man with glasses, smiling brightly. This must be the locket he was talking about. It's so pretty. I'm surprised it still shines like this. And this picture. Did he put this here? No, it must have been Henry. But why? Why would he store it away like this? What should I do? Oh, this is where I'll save. <laughs> yes. Um, Because I don't know what's the right course of action here. Um, but technically, I would say, like, if we're saying take it as in, like, take it for evidence, I would do that instead of just leaving it there because we are looking for whoever this Lewis person is. So I think taking it would be the best action. I should probably hold on to this for now. Hugo is about to put everything back into the chest when he feels a wet and cold sensation crawling up his leg. Oh, what is it? What? Water? A pool of water relentlessly... Oh, I get it! Um... He's supposedly drowned, so the dripping and all that is... I, I guess in a way his presence? Because he drowned? We'll see. I'll see if this is right. <laughs> because that's what makes the most sense to me. He drowned, so therefore water in-house. Um, a pool of water relentlessly spreads across the floor. Already seeping into the chest. Damn it, no! Suddenly, the lights shut off. A scream is heard, followed by a... My... 
Myriad? I have no idea what that word is. Of shouts. Hugo is about to call out to Noah, but stops at the sight of pale feet before him. <laughs> you! Oh. Looming over him stands a tall and ominous figure. His face is shrouded in complete darkness, devoid of any human emotions. It appears as a young man, but Hugo knows that it's far from it. No, this very thing is trying to imitate a human form. Trying to be human. Hugo can only stare back. Don't stare back. Paralyzed in fear, he is forced to watch the horror as it slowly creeps towards him. Oh no. Don't pan up, please. It's just like before. The sensation of someone staring at him from within. Oh no. But this time, it's drawing nearer. Inching ever so closely. The words to call out to Colby or Noah fail to reach out. Lodging in his throat, he struggles in pain. With his breathing... With his shallow breathing, he tries to force his body to move. Then, and then it stops. Looking down at Hugo, filled with nothing but malice and contempt, it speaks. Shall I have not taken the locket? Don't. I did not get to see what that said. Um, all of a sudden, the door... To the bedroom slams shut and the entity disappears. The tension from his body finally releases its agonizing grip and he gasps desperately for air. His blurry vision his vision blurred and breathing jagged. He staggered towards the door. He yanks at the handle several times but it's tightly jammed. Fuck! Noah! Colby! To his dismay, he is only greeted with silence at the other end of the door. Damn it! From a distance, he faintly hears the sound of Colby's relentless barking as it gets further away from the house. Hugo rushes towards the window. He tries to pry it open, but just like the door, the heavy force prevents him from doing so. Fuck this! He frankly looks around the room. He spots a nearby chair. Without a moment sooner, Hugo grabs the chair and strikes at the window. Bit by bit, the window cracks get larger with each blow, splitting off smaller pieces. What the hell is this thing made of? Still trying to catch his breath, he mothers all the strength he has left for a final blow. Damn you, just break already! He did it! Uh, clearing out the remaining glass shards, Hugo appears, Hugo appears his head out to see any railing he can grab hold of. However, he, however, he discovers instead that the wall adjacent is covered in ivy. Despite how heavy the rain has drastically become, he reaches out for it, grabbing a handful of vines. Oh, please don't. Fall. Carefully, he climbs out of the window, gripping tightly and making sure he doesn't lose his footing. Yet, to his luck, the patches of vine he clutches start to tear away from the wall. Oh no. Out of desperation, he struggles to find his grip on another, but fails when he- when his hand slips out of reach. Shit! Oof. Clamoring wildly as he loses grip on the ivy, he crash lands down into a thicket of bushes. Air forced out of him, he heaves uncontrollably, trying to even out his breathing. But even that is laborious, and immense pain spreads across not only from his back, but his entire body. God, I'm getting too old for this. Although his body screams out in pain, he forces himself up. 
At least he's alive. There's still time. I can do this. I have to do this. With staggering feet and haggard breathing, he makes his way to the place where it all started. To the lake where this tragedy starts and ends. You're going by yourself? Don't... <laughs> there was a reason why... You took two people with... Or a person and your dog. Finally entering through the park, Hugo calls out to Colby and Noah. But would they really be out? Would they really leave you? Colby! Noah, where are you? He faintly... He hears faintly the sound of barking and echoes of people yelling in the distance. He rushes towards the echoes, guiding him through the downpour. With his heart racing and blood rushing to his head, he finds his way to the lake. Drawing closer, he sees Nina giving chase to her grandfather. Oh, okay, never mind. They probably did leave him because of this. Uh, unfortunately, she doesn't get too far as Noah stops her. Grandpa, stop! Grandpa! Let go of me! My grandpa, he's... Nina, please, it's dangerous. You'll get hurt too. I don't care. I... I don't want to lose anyone anymore. Is he drowning himself? It's at that instant Hugo trudges against the water, pursuing in Nina's stead. Oh, well. <laughs> Hugo? No, don't! Uh, please fall deaf to his ear. Not even the whines and worried cries of his partner could make him turn back. Determined, he trudges further in. Nearing the deep end, he sees Henry Mortimer gazing directly at the abyss. He looks even more frail and deceived, as if all the life had been drained from him surrendering it all to the lake. Before Henry could lean in, Hugo reaches out and tugs his arm. Mr. Mortimer, Mr. Mortimer, listen to me. Nothing is waiting for you down there, so please, come back to the shore with me. Motionless and unresponsive, he still stares deeply into the, to the water. There are so many things we cannot afford to lose in our lives. And you're one of them. To Nina, you're all she has left. She needs you, Mr. Mortimer. Hugo fell in. A slight jolt from Henry's arms, as if stirred by the motions of Nina. Oh, the mentions of Nina. Oh? He actually moves other than trying to dive into the lake? He slowly turns to face Hugo. Nina. However, just as cruel and violent as the storm, Henry jerks back, wrenching his arm away from Hugo's hold on him. All of this is my fault. If only, if only I got to Lu Lewis sooner, then none of this would have happened. Uh, he blames himself, that's why. Henry inches even closer to the edge. Lewis. I'm sorry. I should have... Should have what? Gone in his stead? Gone with him? You know that wouldn't resolve anything. Not for you or Lewis. I... I read what he wrote to you those years ago. He understood if he didn't want to come see him. But the thing is, Mr. Mortimer, Lewis never thought anything less of you. The locket is proof of that. Lewis's locket? Yes, it's the symbol of his love for you. That's why. You don't have to shoulder all the pain by yourself anymore. We can talk about it. About you and Lewis. All of it together. Oh, his eyes are normal! Hugo extends not only his hand to him, but a promise. A promise that Henry had yearned for so long. A way to forgive himself. He hesitates at first. 
what fool believes and they deserved forgiveness. Such a thing doesn't exist. And yet, despite everything, Hugo still reaches out to him, to a stranger. Maybe he can be forgiven. Just as he was about to reach out for Hugo, a hand slithers around Henry's instead. Oh no. Ew. Its arms unnaturally contort around him while its head perches on his shoulders. This thing, this Lewis, is no longer pretending to be human. With piercing, cold green eyes, it glares directly at Hugo, mocking him, cursing him, wishing nothing but despair. We can be saved? We can be forgiven? There is only one true way out of this. I will share it with you. The most happiest of endings. Oh, it took him. Before Hugo could reach out for Henry's hand, he disappears into the water. Mr. Mortimer! Without hearing the anguished cries and desperate pleas, Hugo dives after him. Oh boy, into the abyss. Plunging into icy waters, Hugo feels shocks. Hugo feels shocks running rampant throughout his body, like spikes continuously piercing from his legs to the tip of his fingers, fiercely and unyielding. His chest tightens and his heart races as he begins to kick his legs, hoping whichever way he goes, he'll find his way to Henry. Swimming deeper and deeper in, he sees. Faintly, a figure slowly descending into the darkness. Uh oh. As he finally gets closer to Henry, long snake-like arms stretch across the void and grab Hugo's neck, violently squeezing all the air out of him. He tries desperately to wrench its hands away. But with each struggle, Hugo's moment movements begin to weigh heavier and heavier. Lewis, where are you, Lewis? It's looking for Lewis? Digging deep into the coat's pocket, he grasps tightly in his hand the locket that Henry kept and had, had long forgotten. Holding it out as it shines ever so brightly in the dark, Oh? Ah, there you are. It releases its grip on Hugo and instead reaches out for the locket. Taking this as a chance, he drops the chain and kicks and kicks with all his might as he grabs Henry's arm. So was it just after the locket this whole time? Or was it like the arranged meeting that Lewis had? and couldn't complete. With his heart burning and his body screaming, he swims desperately to the surface. Almost there. I just have to. As the light from the surface begins to blur, Hugo makes one last attempt to reach for it. With his limbs worn out and his energy spent, this is all he can do. Oh no. Before he loses before he loses consciousness, he notices a figure swimming towards him. Oh, let it be Noah. Getting closer and closer. And then everything fades to black. Noah, please be you. Drifting along with what feels like an endless sea, Hugo courses through wave after wave. Let it be Noah or someone coming to save them. <laughs> Not knowing where he's going or caring for that matter. All he knows is that he's very, very tired. How long has it been since he had a good night's rest? Ah, it's been too long. Maybe I should take that rest now. I'd like that so much. I agree that you deserve it, but not here. Oh, 
I'm sorry for startling you. I just wanted to see you before I go. Lewis? You've done so much for me and Henry. Thank you. No worries. From a far off distance, a voice cries out to him, beckoning for him to come back. Well, I guess this is it. Take care, Hugo. Oh, so I, I think he like temporarily died for that minute <laughs> and then came back with his eyes closed and his sense is still returning. He feels the constant tug and licks of a certain blood bloodhound. Whining as he tries to wake up his partner. Hugo! He also hears another familiar voice, too annoyingly close for his comfort. Eyes shot right open, he jerks up. Confused, Hugo looks around before he coughs up the remaining water in his lungs. Are you alright? Noah starts to pat his head while Kobe continues to whine over Hugo. What happened? Where's Mr. Mortimer? He's safe. So is Nina. They're both okay. The police and the ambulance should be arriving soon. Thank goodness. Isn't there more you have to say to me? Instead of, thank goodness? I swear, you don't listen to a damn word I say. <laughs> Sorry, Noah. Exhausted, he let out a sigh. He then continues to pat Hugo's back aggressively when someone approaches them. Detective Lauren? Oh, Nina. There's someone I want you to meet. Oh, he's an old man again! Behind her stands an elderly man. Frail in, st in stature, he timidly looks to the side pensively as he ponders to himself. Although his youth had long faded, his eyes are what catches Hugo's attention. They're no longer a piercing and vicious green. Only eyes just like Nina's. Hello, Mr. Mortimer. Detective. I never got a chance to say goodbye to him. I always thought about it every day. What if Lewis lived on in this world? What if he stayed a little longer with me? It's because of that constant mindset I dragged everyone down. And kept hurting not only me, but Nina especially. I was the one who kept hurting her. The one to blame for all of this. But you, someone that I've never met, still went out of your way to save me. Not knowing my burdens or my faults. Thank you. Hugo reaches out to Henry and smiles brightly at him. It's my pleasure, sir. But before letting, before he lets go, Henry tugs at Hugo's hand one last time. I hope that someday you too will overcome it. Oh, got him there. <laughs> Well, good morning, Hugo. You're bright and early. <laughs> morning. With much fer fervor and haste, Hugo resumes writing in his notepad. Although, by closer inspection, it looks like he's going to combust any minute. Oh boy. Are you writing up the report? Without looking up, Hugo responds back. Yeah, for the most part. You still need to write yours too. I will. But since I haven't had breakfast yet, and I don't like eating by myself. <laughs> Let me guess. Two is better than one? Bingo. Wow, Hugo. You really catch on. I'm so proud of you. Ah, uh, shut it, will you? I swear. If if only I hadn't fall off the goddamn window, maybe my report would have been shorter. <sighs> Before Noah could begin to cut the bacon, 
He pauses at the mention of Hugo's report. I guess he didn't mention that he fell out of the window. <laughs> um, oh yeah. By the way. Mind telling me what happened to Mr. Mortimer's window? <laughs> I broke it. Well, that's obvious to me. What I don't understand is, why is it broken? Do you know how much it will cost to repair a window like that? I know, I know. It was really dumb of me. I'm sorry. Besides, I told Mr. Mor Mortimer about it before we left. Honestly, I was expecting an earful from him. And also the bill. And... Surprisingly enough, he said it was okay. So what? You just... Called it a day after that? <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Mortimer. You broke it, you pay for it! Would you chill? Of course I'll pay for it. <laughs> but each time I kept insisting, he just shrugged it off. He said we already went through a lot for him. So this was nothing in comparison. Ugh. You know what? He's right. After all that we went through, I deserve at least a nap. Hugo puts down his pen and proceeds to head for the couch. <laughs> Colby fo follows after him. Wait, what about breakfast? I'll eat later. It's nap time now. <laughs> Heavily sighing, Noah sets aside the food on his desk and joins the other, the other two at the couch. Ugh, I'm getting old. I mean, you are old. Shut it. Colby whines asking for more head scratches. Ah, uh, sorry boy. Silently, Hugo scratches the back of Colby's ear as he leans closer to Noah. You know, I'm glad that you came along yesterday. Oh, what's this? Are you getting chummy with me now? Call it chummy or whatever, but I really mean it. If you hadn't saved us back there. Look, I told you before. I'll be there whenever you get yourself into reckless shit. Besides, didn't you say this was nap time? Get some rest. You deserve it. You too. After falling out the window. <laughs> A calming silence fills the room as the three fall deeper into sleep. No big parties or celebrations, just each other's comfort and sharing this small but rewarding night's rest. Ooh, I got the good end! Yay! I kind of want to assume that if I didn't pick up the locket, um, that thing just would have taken Hugo down and he would have died? Or if not that, then at least like the... Um, the grandfather would have just died. One of the two. Or both. I'm not a hundred percent sure what was going on though. Whether it was um like was it a curse? Was it was it actually a curse? Was it I mean they didn't explain why the grandfather looked young all of a sudden. Was it just like kind of like representing like oh it was his doubt? The grandfather's doubt of not being able to, like, be there because he thinks it's his fault for someone that he loved died. Because in, like, with all that, it looks like that, that creature was just looking for the locket. Um, that was an interesting one. It was cool. Mystery. I thought it was very supernatural at first, but I think the more I can, like, See it, the more I feel like it's more like a... I'm forgetting the word, what you call it. <laughs> um, what is represented, like the meaning of it is just like... Blaming yourself on something, on like a death that you couldn't control and it wasn't your fault. I'm not sure how to word that properly, but... That is what I have right now. But yeah, that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm pretty sure the other ending where you don't, um, where you leave the locket, I'm pretty sure it either results to 
Hugo dying or both Hugo and Henry dying. Uh, but if you want to check that out for yourself, I'll leave it down below for you guys to see. Or you can just look it up somewhere else. Whatever you choose. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya!